Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and today I'm going to show you a really fun technique. It is doing a little watercolor stamping like I did on this card, in this card, and it only takes minutes. So let's get to it. So what I'm using here is um, Reeves BFK printmaking paper, and it's like watercolor paper, but it's very, very smooth. It's smoother than a hot press watercolor paper. You can also use this for letter pressing. So um, it's really, really versatile. And from one big 22 by 30 inch sheet, I got 32 of these little, um, I would say they're like three by five size cards. So we're gonna use those. I'm gonna use a couple rubber stamps, which I'm grabbing from by the table as I waltz across the room. They're dirty because I was just using them a few minutes ago and I'm using the same color so I don't need to clean them again. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to do an easy watercolor stamping technique. So here I've got the rubber stamp. Rubber works better than clear just because um, the watercolor isn't going to want to bead up on it. So here I've got pretty thick watercolor paint. Um, I squirt my paints out into a palette like this and let them dry, and then I just go in with a wet brush to reactivate the, um, the paint. It's much, um, it's much easier to use a watercolor this way, and you waste a whole lot less. So I recommend doing that. I just buy the um, paints and the tubes, and then um, I just wet my brush, and I'm ready to go. It's also really handy if you like to go out and paint outdoors, take your paints with you, just grab your paints and go. With a couple brushes, you're good to go. Okay, I can kind of mix my colors right on the rubber there. I'm going to do a little bit of sap green, my favorite green. Just right over my stamp. And I could add a couple shades if I want. I can add a darker green. I can even add a little yellow if I feel like it, just to highlight. All right, now I'm going to grab a spray bottle of water. I'm so prepared. I've got everything over on my other table. I can use water or I can use shimmer spray. I think I might want to use a little shimmer spray for this to make it a little bit fancier. And what I'm going to do is kind of spray the air and bring my stamp to it. Okay, so I'm just kind of like moving the stamp around in the mist. And now I'm going to stamp it right on my paper here. You could even actually stamp the paper because it's 100% um, cotton. It's very absorbent. And... Um, you'll get some uneven kind of little splotches here and there, which is kind of pretty. Now I actually like to get a couple images, so that's my first one. It's pretty, but they even get prettier as you go. So what I'm going to do is actually spray my stamp a little bit more forcefully with the, uh, with the uh, shimmer spray. And then I'm going to stamp it one more time and see what I get. And you just want to give, your, give it a second for the ink to come off the stamp and go on to the... Um, onto the paper. It'll absorb in there really nice, give you a really nice look. And so I get a much softer look this time. I'll show them to you side by side here. I usually like the second one better than the first. And I could even go in with a wet brush and blend my colors around a little bit if I want to. Hope you can see that good. Those lights are pretty bright. Alright, so now we're going to do one that's a little bit more um, involved. So we're going to use several colors on this. Uh, but the technique is exactly the same. Just go in with your paints. The nice thing is you can get like two or three stamps each time you ink it up like this. So, And then you really don't have to do any coloring because all that work is done for you. Just try to get everything inked up. I like this uh, stamp. It's by Whispers. I got it probably 10 years ago. Gosh, longer than that. It was before I had kids. I got this um, at um, a uh, local art supply shop. It's no longer around. I just thought it was so pretty. Using a little turquoise -y, Prussian blue-y color here. I'm going to use that on the outside as well. Don't worry about having it perfect because you want this to kind of look like a watercolor painting and watercolor paintings are a little splishy and splashy and, you know, fun. You want this to look really fun. And a little uh, Indian red here or burnt sienna. This is Indian red. It's a little bit redder. Get this little medallion here. You'll get a feel for how juicy you want your paint the more you practice with this technique. You can do this on cardstock because you're really you're not painting the cardstock. It doesn't have to be really well sized like a printmaking or a watercolor paper. Um, so you can use what you have. Just try a smooth paper. It's going to work quite a bit better on a smooth paper. So again, I'm going to do an indirect spray with my sh with my spray. I'm spraying and I'm bringing the uh, the stamp through the mist. And for this one, since it's really close to the size of my paper and I don't have a lot of wiggle room, I'm actually going to set this right down on top centered. 
I think that's centered. No, it's not centered. It's close enough though. Close enough for you to get the gist of what I'm doing here. Just smoothing my my hands right over the back here. Okay, whoa, that was really splotchy. But still kind of pretty. I'm gonna try it again. I don't think it'll be so splotchy this next time. Give it a little bit of a spritz there. Oops, I got two pieces of paper. And once they don't come out very good, you can cut them up and make bookmarks with them or, or just kind of ink over them and make some backgrounds. This is a fun, fun technique. I'll try it with all those um, uh, natural naturistic stamps. Oh, that one's really pretty. I like the way that looks. So there you go. Now, to make this into a card, I, I really just did a very simple technique. Um, I want a baby wipe. I want to wipe this mess up. Let me grab my baby wipes here. Honest to goodness, I don't think I had anything <laughs> over here ready for this video. Let me just wipe up my glimmer mist there. Alright, so then to make the backgrounds for these cards, I'll show you here. I have this nice kind of shimmery, see that in the light, shimmery background. So what I did was I embossed this and I ran it through twice so I could get the whole thing embossed. Then I'm going to, oh, one thing I wanted to show you was um, I just wanted to stamp a little sentiment and I can do that right with ink right on my card just with the coordinating ink and see that it's very easy you could just mix and match what you have for sentiments with what you have for backgrounds so I just want to show you that real quick so then I would take that ink that I've already used and just kind of add some on there there we go and then I would take these gelatos which are a lot of fun to work with and just kind of add some of those colors in there This is a great technique. I'm using a little silver. I could use some blue, but of course my blue's not over here. So well prepared. Now I'm using a very porous paper. It's just a craft cardstock, so it's going to um, it's going to absorb in there really well. And then watch this fancy trick. I'm gonna wipe up all my ink there. Uh, I'm just using that dirty baby wipe that I wiped my um, my shimmer spray off the table with and I'm just going to use that to blend. If I want to be super duper fancy I can go ahead and take that background and I can actually ink my edges with that baby wipe. Look at that. That is like totally resourceful stamping and scrapbooking, isn't it? Look at that. And then I would just adhere, put that on there, add some brads or something like I did in the original. Do the same thing with this um, this like Florida de -lis. Now it's actually more of a damask background here. After, of course, I stamp the happy birthday on this. Stamp that. Look at that. Neat as can be. So then, of course, I want to harmonize my card with that. So I'm going to throw in some ink on that. And then I'm going to use some gelatos to match. The nice thing about these, actually, these are gel sticks. They're not gelatos. Don't want to get an angry email from the Faber-Castell people. These are the gel sticks, the cheaper version, that I think work just as well, but they are not apparently the same thing according to the Faber-Castell people, so I don't want to misinform. I can't tell the difference. But I'm no scientist. Just scribbling on some of that gelato. You could take more time, of course. I'm just, um, I'm just trying to keep it quick for a YouTube video, cleaning up my mess and using that to harmonize my background. Get that blended and it's also going to help it absorb. And then I would take this and put it on there and call it a day. What do you think of that? And here's the finished card with a little baker's twine and a couple of brads. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.